Hello there. Well, it's Chris Benson here and welcome to the Now Yearbook 1979 Omnibus Edition. So the idea of this is that rather than having to switch on different videos, you can just leave it running and you'll see a review of the Now Yearbook 1979. You'll also see a review of the Now Yearbook 1979 Extra, and you'll also see me catch up with Paul English as he goes through his Now Yearbook 1979 Extra Plus playlist as well. So there's plenty of content, and to add to that, there's a special at the end where you see me review an episode of Top of the Pops from the 25th of October 1979. So all you need to do is get the snacks, get yourself comfy, and here we go. Let's go back to 1979, a great era for music. And this, first of all, is my review of the Now Yearbook 1979. Hello there, Chris Benson's here. Welcome to Talking Music. And yes, a few days later than the release. Obviously, it's been a busy week for us all. Uh, but here it is, finally. The now yearbook 1979 unboxing so where did i get it from you're wondering well i decided to support hmv uh, we've cancelled our amazon prime uh, membership and the last now yearbook disc i got off there was the now yearbook 80 extra and disc three was all scratched um on dennis waterman i could be so good for you um and so i sent it back what, what, what's the point of having a scratched CD and there was a bit of faff because at one point they didn't have another one to send me but I can say that I have got a replacement now so I'm just going to open this one up now I'm looking forward to playing this uh, so here it is I went for the, the basic one again and um, the HMV staff uh, who I was speaking to in Bradford on Monday said they would have loved to have played this on Friday when it came out but for obvious reasons they kept the music quite sombre in store uh, but uh, it's a great release it really is uh, I make it that there is uh, 85 tracks in total. So I'll just show you the, the inside. So there we go. Definitely a different look to it. So compared to the 80s releases, so there you go, there's the disc one. We've got disc two there and the advert for the previous releases. And then we've got disc three there, which is just there. And I'll show you disc four. There we go. So that's your four discs. Are we going to see 79 Extra next? I imagine we will do. And then I think we'll go to 1978. I, I think we're not going to see 1985. That's my prediction. Uh, not, not in 2022. I think it'll be 1978 now. Uh, earlier in the year, I thought we were going to see 85. But I think there is licensing issues that seem to be stopping that for now. But anyway, this one then we've got Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. Uh, the Police, Walking on the Moon. Then we've got The Boomtown Rats, I Don't Like Mondays. Then we've got track four, which is Kate Bush, having a bit of a renaissance at the moment with Wow, uh, released in March 1979. That reached number 14 in the charts. Uh, then we've got Ian Drury and the Blockheads, Hit Me With Your Rhythms. That is a great song. Um, then we've got Blondie, Heart of Glass. It is a strong first disc, no, no denying that. Then we've got Abba, Gimme, 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 A Man After Midnight. We've got Chic, Good Times, which was released in June 1979, reached number five in the charts. It's a bit of a disco phase. Uh, Sister Sledge, We Have Family, Earth, Wind and Fire, September, Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive, Village People, YMCA, classic song. Then we've got Donna Summer, of course, Hot Stuff, which was uh, brought into fashion again in 1997 with the film The Full Monty. Uh, we've got Sparks, Beat the Clock, I forgot how good that song is, great song, released in July 79, top 10 hit, reached number 10, uh, then we've got Gary Newman, Cars, such a good track, uh, then The Flying Lizards, which is called Money, obviously it's a cover, uh, you might not know this version, reached number 5, uh, we've then got The Pretenders, Stop Your Sobbing, I didn't know that this was a Kinks song originally, this is a cover, Originally, this song is from 1964. I didn't know that. Maybe you did. Um, then we've got a brilliant track, Dave Edmonds, Girls Talk, track 18. Jerry Rafferty, Night Owl, is a fantastic tune. 
You always think of Baker Street with Jerry Rafferty, but this is a belter. Uh, then it finishes on two classic songs, Billy Joel, My Life, which I can still remember being eight years old and coming home from a football match in Ermston. And uh, my friend Sean Ma and his dad, Terry, had uh, the radio on. And this was the first time I heard Billy Joel, My Life, on the radio. Never forgot that. It's a great song. Uh, and my favourite from this one has to be Roxy Music, Dance Away. Absolutely timeless. And I still love Roxy Music and Brian Ferry. So on to this two, we've got Madness, One Step Beyond, so a great start. Then we've got uh, The Selector on my radio, Reach Number Eight, released in October 1979. Uh, then we've got The Specials, Gangsters, keeping the theme going. Then we've got Janet Kay. Silla Games, which reached number two, released in June 1979. Uh, then we've got Gary Moore and Phil Liner, Parisian Walkways. Meatloaf, Bat Out of Hell. Uh, then Electric Light, or Electric Light Orchestra, Don't Bring Me Down, which is a superb track. Uh, Rainbow, Since You've Been Gone, Keeping the Rock uh, theme going. Then we've got the Charlie Daniels Band, The Devil Went Down to Georgia. That's a superb one. Uh, as is The Knack, My Sharona. Uh, then we've got the Taurus, I Only Want to Be With You, which of course features Annie Lennox, if I'm not mistaken, who went on to be in the Urine Mix. Um, Squeeze, Cool for Cats, Love Squeeze, uh, Everyone Forgets About Them. And uh, I tell you what, even their newer albums uh, are, are glorious, they really are. I hope they do more. Uh, then we've got Skids, Into the Valley, that was a February 1979 release, reached number 10. Then we've got Sex Pistols, Something Else. The Clash, I Fought the Law, The Jam with the Eaton Rifles, Elvis Costello and the Attractions with Accidents Will Happen, and then XTC making plans for Nigel. We're nearly at the end of this too. I'm just going to, cheers, bit of feta can. Mm. Then we've got Joe Jackson, Is She Really Going Out With Him? Uh, which is a great one. It's uh, fantastic that. I love Joe Jackson. The Cure, Boys Don't Cry, Sushi and the Banshees, The Staircase, uh, mystery, Lena Lovich, Lucky Number, and the B-52s, interestingly, with Rock Lobster. If you say B-52s, you always think of Love Shack. Um, but it's become a bit of a cool hit, this. Uh, in August 1979, it only reached number 37 over here in the UK charts. But it gets a release and maybe a bit of a reappraisal, thanks to the yearbook. Um, on to this three, we've got another ABBA song, Chikatita. Um, Art Garfunkel. Bright Eyes, of course, which was used in Watership Down. Don't think I've ever seen that film all the way through. Um, I certainly remember on the top of the Pops repeats on BBC4, I think they had to trim down the um, art guy from Cole's uh, Bright Eyes because they had a lot of the footage of the film in the video. Uh, Elton John, Song for Guy, great tune. Uh, Sad Cafe would have to be my pick off uh, this three with Everyday Hurts. Then we've got Eruption, One Way Ticket. Uh, Amy Stewart, Knock on Wood, Chic, I Want Your Love, for that's track seven. Then we've got the disco theme continues. We've got Sister Sledge, He's the Greatest Dancer. We've got Donna Summer, Bad Girls, The Crusaders with Street Life, Earth, Wind and Fire, Boogie Wonderland. And you, there's just so many songs that you forget that were, uh, you know, absolutely massive hits uh, from 1979. For example, McFadden and Whitehead, Ain't No Stopping Us Now. Cool and the Gang, Ladies Night, it's such a good disc, this three. Uh, the Real Thing, Can You Feel the Force, Edwin Star, Contact. And then we've got Leaf Garrow, which I remember again from the Top of the Pops repeats, I Was Made for Dancing. The Dooleys, uh, Wanted, uh, Frantique, Strut Your Funky Stuff, Dynasty, I Don't Want to Be a Freak, But I Can't Help Myself, uh, which again, you might not know this one, but it reached number 20 and was released in October 1979. Uh, then we've got the Sugar Hill Gang with Rapper's Delight concluding disc three. On to disc four. We've got to talk about Cliff first. So, just going back to the 1980 extra disc, Carrie appears. You've, you've probably realised, like me, it sounded a bit different. I'm thinking, why does it sound different? Why does this version of Carrie sound different? And I did a bit of Googling and a bit of... Uh, messing around on Spotify, and the version of Carrie that is on the 1980 extra release is a re recording from an album in 1992 called My Kind of Life. Basically, it was an, uh, an album of remixes and re recordings, from what I can gather. But that 
is the version that's been used on the 1980 extra CD. No idea why. Maybe they couldn't get clearance for the original and thought, well, it's better than nothing. I don't know. But that, uh, just I thought I'll throw that in whilst I've discovered it. But anyway, disc four begins with uh, We Don't Talk Anymore. Big hit for Cliff Richard in 1979. Then we've got Neil Diamond, Forever in Blue Jeans, Wings, Good Night Tonight, uh, Electric Light Orchestra, appear again with Shine a Little Love, Olivia Newton-John with A Little More Love, and then Blondie again with Dreaming. Susie Quattro, She's in Love With You, Hook, uh, Dr. Hook, When You're In Love With A Beautiful Woman. Uh, so I'll just show you the back, just a close up on the back again, if you just want to have a quick peek there. There you go. Uh, the Corgis, If I Had You, which reached number 13, uh, released in June 1979, that one. Uh, Dollar, Love's Got A Hold On Me, Milk and Honey, Hallelujah, The Three Degrees, Woman In Love. Then we've got Peaches and Herb, Reunited, uh, Commodores, Still, and then probably my favourite off the final disc is Racy. Love a bit of Racy. Lay your love on me. Um, some girls lay your love on me. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'm glad they made an appearance on the year. But, uh, and I also like the next one. B.A. Robertson, Bang Bang. Um, again, a forgotten song from uh, the late 70s. But I, I love that one. Um, Village People in the Navy uh, follows. Then we've got Boney M. Hooray, hooray, it's a holly holiday. Uh and an absolute belter of a tune uh, at track 19. We've got M and pop music, which just still sounds like it's been recorded yesterday. It's it's timeless. It's absolutely superb. Um, Tube Way Army, uh, Tube Way Army, a friend's electric. And then the Bubbles uh, conclude the yearbook 1979 with video killed the radio star. So yeah, get in the comments. Tell us what songs you'd like to see in the 1979 extra release uh what songs are you hoping for maybe some album songs that you 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 hoping we'll see and also let me know what you think uh will will follow the 79 extra release will we go backwards again like do you agree with me or are we going to finally see 1985 don't forget to check out the uh, interviews I did with Paul English as well um they're on the talking music playlist for you to have a look at right now Thanks for watching. Uh, so definitely a great release. I can't wait uh, to play in full. I'll be back soon with more. Bye-bye. So there you go. That was my review of the Now Yearbook 1979. Lots of content still coming. Don't go anywhere. We've got, as I say, the Top of the Pops watch along coming up at the end where I'll be reviewing content from the 25th of October 1979. Don't forget to comment, let us know what you think of the Omnibus if you like the idea uh, and also coming up we've got uh, my chat with Paul English as well uh, as he goes through his Now Yearbook Extra Plus playlist. Paul always compiles some fantastic playlists of songs that haven't appeared on the Now Yearbooks, uh, and 1979 is no exception at all. So that's coming up in a moment. But first, uh, there was another release to, to go through, and this is the Now Yearbook 1979 Extra review that I did. It, that I did. So here we go, part two of our reviews. Hello there, Chris Benson's here. Welcome to Talking Music. Well, this has been a long time coming. Uh, I finally picked this up from HMV uh, on Saturday, uh, so the 29th of October, uh, when I was on the way to the football. Uh, and so it's been one of them weeks that I finally got round uh, now to opening it and unboxing it. Um, and of course, since then, We've had the announcement of the now year, but 1980 to 1984, the final chapter. And also the now year, but 1985 is on its way as well. So it's all happening and I'll be doing reviews of those as well, I promise. Um, so I'm just trying to get into this. Uh, there we go. We're in. Uh, so there we go. The Now Yearbook 1979 Extra, uh, as you can see, it says Collector's Edition, 67 more essential hits from 1979. So I picked it up from HMB in Bradford. They couldn't find it at first. They had a lot of the, the normal Yearbook 79s, but not uh, they couldn't find the extra one. And then a very kind gentleman uh, 
had a look through all the boxes and found it for me. So here is what the first first disc looks like there. Um, I love the orange. I do love the orange. Uh, and then we've got disc two, which is there. And then disc three, which is there. Uh, so there you go. There you are. Three CDs, 67 tracks in total. It, it really is. Uh, it's a great release. I do like these extras because there's a lot of songs that I haven't heard of before. Uh, and I'm getting them for the first time. It, it's building up my collection. I know it's building up um, a lot of people's collections out there as well. So, But there is the back. You just want to have a quick look at it like that. Uh, so, this one. I've got extensive notes here. Bear with me. So, um, Queen. Crazy little thing called Love. A lot of the now yearbooks. Uh, either start with Queen or Wham. This is no exception. It reached number two in the charts. It was from a Queen album called The Game. It's a great song. Brilliant song. Uh, we then got The Police uh, with Message in a Bottle. That reached number one from their album Regatta de Blanc. Uh, we then go into Blondie, Union City Blue, which reached number 13 in the charts uh, from an album called Eat to the Beat. Um, we then had... Uh, Pretenders, Kid, uh, that only reached number 33 in the charts. So that's a good thing about the extra. You get a lot of the, uh, a lot of songs uh, that didn't chart that well, but often forgotten about, that you get to hear here again for the first time in years. Uh, ELO is next, uh, Last Train to London, reached number eight. It's from a cracking album called Discovery. Uh, then we've got Roxy Music uh, with Angel Eyes, that reached number four. Again, Manifesto is a wonderful album. Um, we've then got um, Kate Bush, Them Heavy People, from an album called The Kick Inside. Now, this wasn't a single in the UK. It was only a single in Japan. So it's interesting that this has been included. Uh, we've then got Squeeze, Up the Junction. Uh, that was from the album Cool for Cats, reached number two in the charts. Uh, we've then got The Boomtown Rats, Diamond Smiles. Now... This was uh, reached number 13 in the charts. It deals with death. And staff at Duke Street Hospital in Glasgow filed a petition demanding that the song was banned uh, due to the lyrics exploiting um, a real-life suicide, they said. so. But it reached number 13 in the charts. Uh, we then got Ian Jury and the Blockheads, Reasons to be Cheerful, Part 3. Uh, that reached number 3 in the charts. We then got uh, Sparks, the number one song in heaven. That got to number 14. Uh, we've then got The Three Degrees, The Runner. That was released in March 1979. Uh, got to number 10. Got to number 10. We've then got a bit of a disco theme continuing. Donna Summer, Dim All the Lights. Uh, that got to number 29. Sister Sledge, Lost in Music. One of the best songs on the compilation. Uh, and that got to number 17. I thought it would have charted higher than that. But only number 17. Uh, Chic, My Feet Keep Dancing. Uh, that got to number 21. Then we've got Rose Royce, Is It Love You're After? Uh, that got to number 13. So uh, that, that did quite well in the charts. Uh, then we've got Boney M, Gotta Go Home. That reached number 12, released in August 1979. Uh, then we've got Voyage, Let's Fly Away, which only just managed to get into the top 40, reached number 38. Madness, The Prince. Uh, got to number 16, released in September 1979, but bigger things were to come for Madness, weren't they? Uh, darts, Duke of Earl, love a bit of darts, uh, and this got to number 6 in the charts. We then got Mike Oldfield with his uh, rendition of Blue Peter, which got to number 19, and then disc 1 ends with one of my favourites off the compilation, I'm just glad it got included, uh, Fiddler's Dram, Day Trip to Banga, uh, which got to number three. I remember seeing on Top of the Pops uh, in the BBC Four repeats, uh, but it's a great, great tune. Love it. Uh, and obviously, with seeing the 79 Extra, you see all the different genres that were present in the charts. And as we move into this two, it gets more and more eclectic. It really does. So we've got the members, the sound of the suburbs that got to number 12. We've got the Ruts, Babylon's Burning, that got to number seven. The Jam with Strange Town, that got to number 15. Um, then we've got the Clash English Civil War, that got to number 25. The Stranglers with Duchess, that got to number 14. Uh, then we've got Sushi and the Banshees, Playground Twist, um, that got to number 28. 
then we've got Public Image Limited with Def Disco, number 20 in the charts. Uh, Skids working for the Yankee Dollar. Uh, that got to number 20 as well. Uh, we then get one of my favourites, again off the compilation, Jimmy Jimmy by The Undertones. Great tune. Um, and that got to number 16. Uh, we then have the Sex Pistols, Come On Everybody. Uh, that got to number three. I did not realise that charted as high as it did. Um, but released in, uh, I think it was June 1979. Uh, but it got to number three in the charts. Um, another great tune then, Dr Feelgood, Milk and Alcohol. Brilliant tune. Uh, never seems to age. Number nine, it got to released in January of the year. Uh, we then have the Dickies, Banana Split. So that got to number seven. Uh, Secret Affair, Time for Action. Uh, that got to number 13. Then we've got the Jags, Back of My Hand. That got to number 17 in the charts. The Tourists, which of course featured Annie Lennox, uh, The Loneliest Man in the World. That got to number 32. Uh, then an interesting inclusion. We've got Japan, Life in Tokyo, which didn't do uh, well in 1979. In fact, it only charted in 1982. And it appears in the now yearbook 1982 as well, Life in Tokyo. So it's the first, I think it's the first yearbook song that we've got twice. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we've then got Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, uh, Electricity. That was released on Factory Records, I think, as a, as a single. Uh, we've then got Shalimar, Take That to the Bank. Got to number 20, released in December 1978. So just about being uh, okay to include in the 79 extra, I guess. Dan Hartman, This Is It. That got to number 17, released in January 79. Uh, Edwin Starr, Happy Radio. That got to uh, number nine. Uh, great tune. Isley Brothers, uh, It's a Disco Night. Uh, that reached number 14. It was their last top 20 hit uh, for the Isley Brothers. Chic, My Forbidden Lover. Great, great tune. Uh, one of my picks. Reached number 15 uh, in the UK uh, charts. Diana Ross, The Boss. Only reached number 40. Uh, then we've got Cher, Take Me Home, which didn't chart in the UK at all. It reached number eight in the uh, US Billboard Hot 100, but didn't chart over here. So we move on to this three. We've got Blondie, Sunday Girl, which was number one for three weeks. We've got Painter Man by Boney M, which reached number 10. We've then got The Three Degrees, My Simple Heart, which you'll all know. That got to number nine. We've then got Commodores, Sail On which got to number eight. Uh, we then got Earth, Wind and Fire, which is an absolute belter after The Love Has Gone. Uh, that reached number four. Uh, we then got Barry White, Just The Way You Are. Uh, number 12, that reached in the charts. And a very clever connection, uh, because then, of course, Barry White was covering a Billy Joel song, and Billy Joel appears next with Honesty, uh, which, again, didn't chart in the UK. It reached number 24 in the US Billboard Hot 100, but no single... Uh, chart for it here. Uh, we then got uh, Marianne Faithful, The Ballad of U Lucy Jordan, which uh, reached number 48, but yet kind of uh, is included here. Uh, Jerry Rafferty, great tune, Get It Right Next Time, that reached number 30. I thought it did better than that. Uh, we've got Toto, Hold the Line, which got to number 14 in the charts. Status Quo, Whatever You Want, that got to number four. Great hit for Status Quo. Uh, Thin Lizzy, Waiting for an Alibi, that got to number nine. Uh, we've then got Driver 67 with Car 67, that got to number seven, lots of sevens there. Uh, B.A. Robertson, Knocked It Off, that got to number eight. Cats UK, Luton Airport, which reached number 22. I think it was a, a kind of a homage to the Lorraine Chase Campari adverts. Uh, and uh, it was a novelty song. Uh, you've got a lot of genres, as I say. Novelty songs were definitely there in 79. And that was Cats UK, Luton Airport. Some Girls Racing. Love that tune. Uh, it got to number two. Um, we did a Mother's Day video many years ago, surprising my wife, and we used that song in the background. Great tune. Love a bit of racing. Uh, then we've got Darts again. Get it. Second appearance on the album. That reached number 10. Dollar. Who Were You With In The Moonlight? That got to number 14, released in May 1979. Uh, then we've got uh, Sally Oldfield and Mirrors. This would be one of my picks off the album. It is 
absolutely brilliant. Uh, and again, doesn't get any radio play. Uh, reached number 19 and released in December 1978. Uh, we then got Lena Martel, One Day at a Time, which was number one for three weeks. I perhaps wonder how it got to number one, but it did get to number one. Uh, and the album concludes with Paul McCartney, Wonderful Christmas Time, which reached number six in the charts. So there you go. It's a great mix uh, of songs, uh, and I do like the extra releases. It's going to find a nice place on my shelf now and get some airplay as well at the same time. Uh, so uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, and there's also coming up uh, a 1979 Omnibus episode, which is going to include this review. It's going to include uh, the original 1979 yearbook review, uh, my discussion with Paul English about his 1979 extra plus playlist and a bit of a watch along of a top of the pops episode as well so uh look out for that being uploaded as well thanks for watching uh, and i'll see you for the next yearbook review so there you go that was the now yearbook 1979 extra uh review that i did but there is so much music to get through i mean i don't know about you i've got it on my ipod and i play it on there but there's just so many tracks i mean you're talking seven cds now that we've got 79 80 81 82 83 84 uh and also we've got four now of 1985 and we've got more coming the final chapter of 1980 to 1984 as well there must be somebody out there that's got through them all but i haven't managed to yeah i'm trying my best uh but anyway right now we've got a treat for you if you haven't seen this it's brilliant um so we've got my chat with Paul English as he goes through his now yearbook 1979 extra plus playlist that's on Spotify. It is absolutely brilliant. Uh, a whole avenue of music that you don't see on the yearbook releases. Right now on Talking Music, we are joined once again by the legend that is Paul English to go through another compilation that he's put together another playlist it's the now yearbook 1979 extra plus hello paul hi chris thanks very much for having me good to see you again uh the 1979 uh the extra plus are a real challenge to put together <clears throat> like 1980 there is just so much music to include uh and some things have to be left out. It's a very strong the, year, isn't it? I mean, the thing is, yeah. looking at your playlist that you've picked, there's a lot of good material that's been left off the yearbook 79 and the 79 X. A lot of material, isn't there? Yeah, an awful lot. And some acts like, like out of had two tracks on this on this playlist, I decided to keep them at one each just to give fairness to the others. Ball Roxanne, huge hit in 1979, moves into Supertramp's Breakfast in America. Another one you don't hear as much now. A bit of disco with the Bee Gees, ABBA, Patrick Hernandez, Anita Bell, Village People and Shaka Khan in a nice sequence. And moves into Herbie Hancock and Mike Oldfield, you know, which kind of really a real dance floor mad section there um, I kind of think that it's a pity Michael Jackson has been excluded from the yearbooks you know uh, aside from the, on 1984 but off the wall such a good track and uh, kind of the, the start of his imperial period um, Elton John has the excellent Are You Ready For Love which is produced by Tom Bell really nice disco track and after that, I kind of go into a, a kind of a yacht, um, sequence um, of the Doobie Brothers, Commodores, Robert John, you know, kind of a West Coast vibe, which up to the end of the disc, you know, you have a, a couple of female singers like Ricky Lee Jones and uh, Judy uh, Zuki's finishing up with uh, some sad country from Anne Murray, You Needed Me. Just to touch on this one, though, there, Paul. I mean, I, when I was looking at the playlist for this one, I thought, Judy Souk, who's this? And then I played it, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I haven't heard this in a long time. It's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful song, that one, isn't it? Uh, it's a great yeah, yeah, song. Yeah, very good, very good, yeah, yeah. I mean, also, very like, mellow. 
songs like you say, um, Fire, the Pointer Sisters, I, I would pick that one out. Um, obviously, Elton John, Are You Ready for Love? Was it was it something like two thousand and three, something like that, when it kind of eventually found the That's popularity? Right. Was it? Right. Yeah. But it's a yeah, great, it's a great remix tune. by yeah. Exactly. Really good. Really good track. And uh, it together well. It's a strong uh, representative look at the more mainstream end of 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 the year, whereas. Disc. I move on to a kind of punk and new wave team for quite a lot of it. Not not all, but a bit like 1980 in that regard. So, so Elvis Costello and Nick Lowe, partners in crime, starting off with Oliver's Army and Cruel to Be Kind. Graham Parker's The Rumor. Not a big hit, but with the other two. Then you have Squeeze, The Jam, The Specials. All strong tracks from the year. Gets into a little bit of more or stuff with Matchbox, Rocky Sharp and the replays. You know, nice revivalists. Um, Dave Evans doing a good cover of Queen of Hearts. Um, Newton did a more famous version. I'm trying to work out who came first, but um, that was uh, that, she had a hit with that in 1981. Then you have Hilarious, Nice Legs, Shame About the Face. Probably wouldn't get a, a release nowadays. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> The under shortest track on the yearbooks are extras. It's only a minute and 34 seconds. Um, Sex Pistols in the rock and roll with Silly Thing. And a lot of people don't like that. They think it's uh, cartoonish, but I'm a fan. Um, and the damn the bus sequence to an end. And it kind of jump stateside after that with the cars and Cheap Trick. So, yeah. Uh, have you any favorites? from that um for me for me um uh, there was quite a few that i didn't know on that disc but i mean i would pick the eagles always a fan of the eagles heartache tonight i think uh i would pick that uh and Great track. yeah sultans of swing i mean that is such a good uh track and obviously we mentioned on uh, the last episode the licensing issues with uh, david bowie uh, boys keep swinging um, yeah, that is a great. Did he do that? On, was it um, when he appeared on the Kenny Everett show? Pat, I could be wrong on that. It might, might have been. Have, yeah, yeah. He might, he might yeah, have been. It's, um, a, it's the right era. Yeah, yeah. I think he might yeah. have. I think it was. I think he appeared guest appeared on the Kenny Everett video show with that song. I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I love the the <laughs> Matchbox and the the Rocky Sharp period of the album as well. Um, and yeah. I mean, we went going back to the beginning of the album. I think Elvis Costello has tried to distance himself from uh, Oliver's Army. Do you think that was perhaps the reason that we haven't seen it? Definitely, I don't think he plays it live anymore. Um, he's not happy with uh, the lyrics that he wrote at the time. No. So not a licensing issue because Accidents Will Happen was on the main now yearbook for 1970. So, you know, it's just, it seems to be written. Really, um, there's nothing malicious in it. And I've but, heard radio uh, stations own cho- try and... Oh, sorry, yeah. I was saying, I've heard radio stations kind of skip that verse. I've heard them try different things so they can still play it. But um, I think um, when he, I think he said, oh, like, when he dies, he does not want to be remembered from that song. I think I uh, read uh, that was not that long ago. Unfortunately, it's w- one of his most famous. You know yes. what I mean? If In normal circumstances, you'd be, if he, if he passed away, you know, the first few tracks you'd play. So, um not much you could do about it now. Hard, hard to hard to edit it out. Uh, the the other favorite I'd pick out though is ELO, um, which is a, a forgotten yes. ELO track for me. The Diary of, of Horace Wimp. I think it's a great yeah. track. Very good one. It's I thought it might make the main the main releases, but yeah, kind of nice operatic feel to it, and uh, it l- not, leads in nicely to the, which you know big film. Which in I've never seen. 78, 79. I've never yeah, seen right, that okay. film. Well worth it. Uh, I suppose we should end with a question. A, 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 oh, sorry. A, a long one. Yeah. Um, I suppose we should A end. long three-hour watch, yeah. 
Oh, but three hours. Oh, my word. Uh, I suppose we should end with a question. You were right that we're going to get the yearbook 85 because you, you predicted that uh, last time. Uh, what's your thoughts on the track listing? There's obviously we're not going to get running up that hill. We might get that in uh, 85 extra. Maybe they're using that as a selling tool for the 85 extra. We're getting cloud busting. What, what was your thoughts on the track listing? I think I think um, running up that hill will be on now 113. The, ah. the next edition of now. She's going to come out in November. So the extra won't be out till December. You know, assuming the, the normal pattern yeah. is. So on the on the 85 main release to steal its thunder. It it'd be a pity if it didn't feature at all. You know, it, it doesn't really matter which one is on. Well, on that doesn't bother me. Like Duran Duran's Rio was held off for the extra when it was arguably a bit their biggest track of the year. So, yeah, the 85 track list is very strong. Um, there's an awful lot to pick from that year as well, though. It's and there's stuff that won't get included, like Dave's yeah, probably the, the solo material, like uh, Susudio or One More Night, whereas because it's really a Philip Bailey track. It's on his album rather than Phil Ah, Collins. which is why we see that right. I mean, somebody said yeah. that somebody messaged saying, Do you think we'll see uh, Russ Abbott finally get on a compilation with Atmosphere? Because that was a single in 85. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought, Don't he might do. I don't know. Who knows? And he might see on the 85 extra. What would you like to see on the uh, the 85 That extra? would be good. Yeah. I'd like to see the crowd, uh, You'll Never Walk Alone. Yeah. And for Africa. Although, the second, uh, the latter is a seven minute track, it would take up a lot of space. But, uh, I know Brian Ferry's on it already, but I really like to see Don't uh, Don't Stop to Dance, um, which is a, a big favorite of mine. Boys and Girls is a great album, Ray. um, uh, it's really a, good, absolutely album. Yeah. wonderful yeah. album, yeah. It is a great album. Yeah. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for uh, for coming on once again. And uh, the no, 79 you're, you're Extra right. playlist is fantastic. Great, great to chat through. Thanks, Paul. All the best. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm having such a good time. Hello there, welcome to the Top of the Pops Watch Along. So we are playing back the episode of Top of the Pops, which went out on BBC One on the 25th of October 1979. What did the charts look like? Well, here we go. Number 30, if I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? Bellamy Brothers, then The Sparrow by The Ramblers, The Prince by Madness, Star by Earth, Wind and Fire, On My Radio by The Selector, Kate Bush on Stage, an EP, Luton Airport, Catch UK, then The Great Rock and Roll, Swindle and Rock Around the Clock, Sex Pistols and Temple Tudor, She's in Love With You, Susie Quattro, Crazy Little Thing Called Love Queen, Back of My Hand by The Jags, You Can Do It, Al Hudson and The Soul Partners, My Forbidden Lover, She. Making plans for Nigel, XTC, Gonna Get Along Without You Now, Viola Wills, The Devil Went Down to Georgia, Charlie Daniels Band, Queen of Hearts, Dave Edmonds, Whatever You Want, Status Quo, Since You've Been Gone, Rainbow, OK Fred Errol, Dunkley, Dreaming Blondie, uh, then we've got Fleetwood Mac, uh, Tusk, Message in a Bottle with the Police, Chosen Few, The Dooleys, Give Me, Give Me, Give Me Abba, Everyday Hurt, Sad Cafe, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, Michael Jackson, When You're In Love With A Beautiful Woman, Dr. Hook, Video Kill The Radio Star, The Buggles, One Day At A Time, Lena Martell. I was not as quick as what they played them credits then, was I? So we've got a studio performance uh, after the charts. We've got the specials, uh, a message to you. It's a great song. I thought the uh, the audience might be moving a bit more to this. There's a few there on the left. Um, it's a 1967 song. I didn't realise that until I was researching for this uh, by Dandy Livingston. Um, but this version reached number 10. Um, this version was produced by Elvis Costello. Uh, and at the time when this went out on Top of the Pops, uh, it was only at number 41 in the charts. Amazing, really. But great tune. Gonna get along without you now. Um, well, what can I tell you about TV in this week? 
Well, so this was from the 25th of October 1979. Um, ITV went back on air just the night before after an 11 week industrial dispute. So Top of the Pops this uh, evening, 25th of October, went out at 20, 20 past seven on uh, BBC One. And then after it, you had Blankety Blank at 7.55 and then Citizen Smith, the John Sullivan sitcom that starred Robert Lindsay. That went out at half past eight. BBC Two had Newsweek at 7.25 against Top of the Pops. So let's face it, we probably would have watched Top of the Pops. Uh, ITV had a survival special against Top of the Pops. Um, and then BBC Two at nine o'clock, quite interestingly on that night, had Basil the Rat, which was the final episode of Faulty Towers that was ever made. So there you go. Good song now. So we've got Queen. We've got a uh, crazy little thing called Love. Brilliant. And uh, this peaked at number two. Uh, this was at number 21 when this was broadcast now on top of the pops. So uh, it was still climbing up the charts. Um, but having composed this song, Freddie Mercury played rhythm guitar whilst performing the song live, uh, which was the first time he played guitar in concert with Queen, I think. So, I mean, it's a great tune. It's it's timeless, great video. And obviously the, the video budget's got even bigger in the 80s, but it's a great song, absolutely brilliant. So after that on the BBC Four repeat a few weeks ago, uh, we would have had Cats UK with Luton Airport. Uh, and then the Charlie Daniels band with The Devil Went Down to Georgia, which is a fantastic tune. Um, both were cut out of the um, 2022 BBC Four repeat. Um, what used to happen when this first got repeated on BBC Four is we'd get a 30 minute slot at 7.30. And then we had to wait till the early hours for the full uncut version if, then, if an, an episode was longer than 30 minutes uh, but sadly not in 2022 uh, Cats UK, Luton Airport was at number 24 at the time this episode went out and it peaked at number 22 uh, the Charlie Daniels band I mean it's a great tune, I've seen the video is still on uh, YouTube, you can t judge it for yourself, it's a great song um, we're on to Chic now, My Forbidden Lover uh, danced with uh, Legs and Co of course and it was number 18 this week and it reached uh, number 15 in the charts. Um, I guess, you know, it's just one of them dance tracks that you forget about. I think it is, but it's, it's, it's a great tune, it really is. It's a brilliant tune. So Peter Powell just introducing Dr. Hook when you're in love with a beautiful woman. We've got a video uh, of that one. Uh, this was number three this week. Um, I've seen pictures, I think it was on the top of the Pops thread when this was repeated, of Dr. Hook being naked on stage, the band just prancing around. Um, honestly, don't go, just, once you see it, you can't unsee it really. Um, it reached number one though, this song, for um, three weeks. It's a, it's a great tune, it really is a great tune. Um, and it's, it's one of those just, you know, if you were picking, you know, top, Top 100 songs of the 70s, it would always be in that list, wouldn't it? It's, it's, it is. Still timeless. It's a great tune. So, oh, oh, so far, this episode, I think, of um, Top of the Pops is pretty strong. Um, now, I know what's coming. <laughs> so, after Dr. Hook, it definitely changes pace. We've got Iris Williams there. We've got kind of... Uh, a very out of focus audience there. Um, this is the theme from the deer hunter called He Was Beautiful, Cavatina. Um, it was only at number 48. It goes to reach number 18 in the charts, but I don't know. I, I can't I can't get into this song. I'm sure somebody's gonna reply now and say, Oh, it's a great song. I've listened to it a couple of times now and I, I still, I'm, I'm still bewildered by it, to be honest. Now, I do like this one. I hadn't heard of it until I'd seen this uh, recently. But we've got the Doolies here. The Chosen Few. So this was number seven this week. 
Uh, and number seven was the highest position. And this was the last top 20 hit. He looks a bit like Paul Nicholas, actually, doesn't he? Um, <laughs> he does. Um, but this was their last top 20 hit for the Doolies. But yeah, I like it. I don't mind this. I think it's, it's quite good. Obviously, you know, um, you know, we had Bucks Fizz very similar a couple of years later. Um, but yeah, I, I don't mind this one. Okay, now we're on to Janet Brown, the Iron Lady. Now, Janet Brown was married to Carry On star Peter Butterworth, uh, who died on the 17th of January 1979. Um, so this, if you like, uh, nine months later, she released this. It didn't chart. She's portraying Margaret Thatcher, who became Prime Minister on the 4th of May 1979. And... Maybe they thought it would chart after this Top of the Pops performance, but it didn't. It's it's one of them novelty songs that's definitely been forgotten about. I'd not heard this. It's probably not surprising it didn't chart, really. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a strange one. Uh, and if this episode of Top of the Pops uh, already had Iris Williams, this this was another bewildering one, really. It was, uh, yeah. Hmm... So we've got Errol Dunkley, oh Fred, I like this, I like this. Uh, number 11 this was, highest place it reached in the chart. Um, and only one more chart hit after this. Um, and that was called Sit Down and Cry, uh, which reached just number 52 in February 1980. But, but I think it's really easy to listen to. And, um, you know, I'm comparing it to Iris Williams and Janet Butterworth. And sorry, uh, I'm comparing it to Iris Williams and Janet Brown and thinking, you know what? This isn't bad at all. <laughs> no, I do like it. I do like it. Um, I don't know how they fit everyone on the stage, mind. Look how many they've got there in mean, band. So we're on to the number one. Lena Martel, One Day at a Time. Number one, this was three weeks it spent at number one. Three weeks. And she didn't have another chart hit. And just when you're watching this footage in the corner, bear in mind, she's... She was 39 at the time. I mean, it's nothing like any of the pop songs that reached number one, you know, in the same era at all. But you know what? She did it. She did it. And she, there she is in history. She got, she got a number one. It's, it's you know, it's, um, it's an acquired taste, perhaps. It's, I like country, but I wouldn't say I'd pick this one. But, uh, but there she was. She was number one. And so the end credits come on. We've got uh, Gimme, Gimme, Gimme by ABBA, um, which was number six here. And it ended up going to uh, number three in the end. Um, but yeah, there you go. Definitely a mixed bag for that um, episode from 25th of October 1979. But having listened to the yearbook at the same time recently, uh, 17, it's great to see uh some of the music from that era as well and it's a brilliant idea from bbc4 to uh play the episodes from this week in various years gone by as well uh it's a it's a brilliant idea um so there you go we'll do more watch alongs if you like it let me know uh and we'll do more uh alongside the yearbooks uh in future that's it from me bye for now